Of all the questions, this is the one I, I found most tricky to answer because there's so many different types of um, good development, uh, development that I admire that I think works for the people who, who live in those, in those homes and in those uh, neighbourhoods. I think fundamentally you're, you're wanting always to just promote people's health and well-being. You want uh, secure, safe homes with really generous space standards, with generous personal and shared amenities, so people really have space to breathe in their living environment. You want housing in particular that is beautifully composed, that uh, engenders an amount of civic pride. And when it's a council project, municipal pride, you know, housing design that gets the basics intuitively right. So it's the fire exit in the right place, person in a wheelchair or a parent with a buggy, able to access it easily. Are the bins in the right place? They're easy and intuitive to, to use. In terms of projects that um, I admire, I mean, there are very, very many that I could point to. I think of our council home schemes. There, there are several that I'm really proud of. I think the best is yet to come. The best are in planning or currently under construction. Projects like Meeting House Lane, a house Tompkin scheme um, on the uh, extending the Acorn Estate in Peckham it will be, I think, one of the best council housing projects we've seen for half a century, he says. <laughs> but um, ones that we've completed, um, I'm really proud of Mark Lake Court, which is an extension of the Kipling estate. This was one of the projects we, we did in partnership with Leather Market, CBS. Uh, there was really strong community influence um, over the design of those homes. They're really high spec, spacious, beautiful homes. They're also all social rent homes in a very central area just a, a few hop skip and a jump away from the shard so i think there's a strong statement there about um you know planning for mixed communities uh, in the future and also sits really comfortably uh, within the existing estate it doesn't even though it is a really high quality development um it isn't the kind of pristine new build that um makes residents in the neighboring homes feel uncomfortable and and doesn't create that kind of uh imbalance so that's um, an infill project that I really admire. Um, one that's under construction at the minute in my ward, which is a partnership between the United St. Saviour's Arms House Charity and the Council. Um, it's for 57 uh, extra care homes for over 55s. Um, this, I think, is one of the most important projects anywhere in London because I think it's carving out a new way of how you can be old in London. Baby boomers who are now getting old and entering retirement age have a different expectation generally to, uh, for uh, different aspirations about how they will live in their senior years compared to previous generations. And I think it's, it's important for carving out how you can get under-occupied homes in all tenures, not just in council housing, uh, vacated and made available to uh, the many families who are overcrowded in London, as well as creating a genuinely age-friendly city and, and borough. Uh, and the thing about this scheme, it's just incredibly beautiful, it has a beautiful courtyard, has a great open community cafe that's part cafe, part waiting, part bus stop shelter. There's a bus stop straight uh, right outside. So we'll have kids kind of waiting to go to school, um, standing inside, having a chat. You've got a craft room, you've got a hairdresser. Um, I, I think it's a really important scheme and one I'm really proud of. Um, and I, I, I went to see the beginning of the construction site a couple of weeks ago and, and it should be hopefully complete sometime next year. When you're looking at that scheme, uh, Leo, with, with sort of social distancing and, and pandemic in mind, are there, are, are you re-evaluating some of those interventions, some of those design aspects that that um, that have contributed so much to your optimism about the scheme? You know, just to, have things changed? There's generally been a consensus that it's really important to have private amenity space in new homes. Some people don't like to see balconies jutting out of homes um, in new developments uh that, maybe that's a clumsy way of doing it but i think you know that that has been absolutely underscored by the experience of the pandemic and, and people being in lockdown particularly when they're confined to housing where they can't get outside so easily uh, particularly when they're overcrowded um that constant pressure that you that goes back many hundreds of years really um of trying to pack as many people in as many rent payers and mortgage payers into the smallest amount of space um, that has to be pushed against. We've got to be building more three beds, four beds, uh, homes with study spaces, homes with proper storage and crucially housing with uh, proper, really good quality private amenity space where you can get outside 
and, and you can breathe. And that's something we've been adapting our new homes design guide um, in mind for. And we're also having a look at um, how planning policy um, is encouraging developers to come forward with that type of development as well. It's been a, I think it's frustrating that it takes an experience like a lockdown to really drive home the importance of having light, spacious housing uh, where you're not overcrowded and confined. Um, so, uh, yes, in a word. Thank you very much, Councillor, for answering our questions today. Viewers, if you'd like to see more of this interview, it's posted in seven parts over seven days at thevoiceofauthority.co.uk. The Voice of Authority presents the ambitions, the challenges, the values, the drivers, the motivations and the influences of key people at councils in their own words. This is where you find out what matters most to top people at the councils you want to do business with. The Voice of Authority is one of the channels created by 3Fox, the marketing agency for councils, to keep our network of councils, developers, investors and their advisors and influencers connected. Find out more about our channels and opportunities to participate in webinars, in interviews and other campaigns at www.3fox.co.uk.